In this video, we're going to see how to create an autocomplete using the HTML data list and option tags. First of all, why do we want an autocomplete? Well, we want to make our users' experience with our application as quick and as error-proof as possible. And one thing that we want to do is take a look at text fields and think, is there any other way we can gather the data from that user? Because in a text field, a user can type pretty much anything. So radio buttons are a good choice, check boxes, drop down, whatever we can use. But there again, if we do need to use a text field and there's possibly a predefined set of options, that's where an autocomplete comes in really handy. Think about the different ways that somebody could represent pounds as in weight. You could have LBS, you could have the pound symbol, you could spell out pounds, things like that. So by having an autocomplete with some predefined terms, it helps to limit the input to exactly what we want to see on our end. So we have a search box up here and note that I can type in something like oak and it just, okay, I'm typing it in and no autocomplete comes up. Eastern, same thing, I can start typing in Eastern and I don't get an autocomplete. So I'm going to use the data list to put an autocomplete on this page and I'm going to pre-populate it with just a few options. I'll be working in this navigation bar, which is up across the top, and it's shared across all of the different pages of this site. So one thing to keep in mind is that when the browser sees this page, it will be a fully rendered HTML page with the HTML head and body sections. But the part that we're working in is just going to be the top nav div right here, which is actually pulled in from a separate file. In my case, because I'm using Spring Boot with Timeleaf, Timeleaf allows me to define a fragment and then it assembles on the server side and it's full HTML by the time it reaches the browser. So nonetheless, this is the fragment that represents our top nav. And I'm going to look specifically here at this input, which is where I was typing in the word oak. And you see it's a normal HTML tag. It has class, type, placeholder, and then several other items. So we are simply going to add a new item underneath this. It's an HTML tag that doesn't really have a look and feel. You could give it a look and feel with CSS, but by default it doesn't have a look and feel. So we'll say data list, and then ID is the important part. ID equals plant underscore search. And then we will create an open and close tag set. Now before you move forward, let's consider how to use this ID equals plant search we need to take this data list and associate it with an input tag because the data list is simply data behind the scenes that the user won't see. On the other hand, the input element is what the user does see, and it's where the user will interact with this data. The way the user will interact with the data is the user will start typing a word, and then the data list that we're creating now will be the bank of words that will autocomplete based on what that user has typed. So we need to match these two together. We can do so by adding a list attribute and then setting it equal to that plant search ID that we used here, down here in the data list. Whatever that ID is, if you called it something other than plant search, just make sure that the input element has the list attribute equal to that ID and that the data list has the ID with that same name and then this association occurs. Now we need to populate some data in here. So we'll use option value equals and then we'll say oak. And we can make a series of these tags. We'll need one for each entry. So we'll, I'll just put in a few well-known trees, oak, maple, pine, spruce. Then we're going to say oak-leaved hydrangea, which is actually a shrub. It's not an oak tree, but it's called oak-leaved hydrangea. The reason why I'm putting this in is this will help us test out our autocomplete. So let's save and re-render. Here's what the page looks like in Chrome. Notice we get a little drop down here where we can click and see all of the possible options. I can also start typing and you notice if I type MAP, it only shows me maple, which is the only option which has those words. On the other hand, if I type oak, I get both oak and oak leaved hydrangea. Let's take a look at the same operation, but in Microsoft Edge. So you notice that it doesn't have the arrow, but when I click, it does show a drop down with each of the options. I type MAP and it auto completes to maple. I type OAK and it gives me both oak and oak leaf hydrangea. Now here's one area where the two browsers are a bit different though. 
Notice I went through and I updated and added a value between the open and close option tags. In this case, it's simply the Latin name or the genus of this plant. Now, take a look at what happens when I'm in Internet Explorer or Edge rather. If I type in cork, if I type in oak, it's really funny because it's auto completing based on what's in that option value. In other words, what's inside the option open element itself. But what it's showing is what's between the open and close option tags. In other words, notice I type in oak and you see Quercus and Hydrangea. So with Internet Explorer, it auto-completes based on this and it shows what's over here. Now let's see how Chrome handles the same situation. First of all, empty out our data. And you notice that it has the value, in other words, the value attribute of the open option tag in bold. And then the text that's between the open and close option tag is in kind of a normal font underneath that bold. So a little different look and feel. Now if I type on oak, you see I get oak and oak leaf hydrangea, and it also has that genus, genus name Quercus and hydrangea. If I type on Quercus, note that it will autocomplete on that as well. Where Internet Explorer will autocomplete on oak, but it will not autocomplete on Quercus. So a little different browser behavior there, but nonetheless, it's definitely a better user experience than just having a plain old text box. One limitation. All of the data that we have here has to live inside of our HTML page. And we could easily populate this with something like a time leaf repeating tag or something of that nature. So we could dynamically create this on the server side, no problem. But imagine if you had maybe 6,000 different options. You'd have a really bloated HTML page. So this specific data list option autocomplete, I would recommend if you just have a few choices like inches, meters, feet, centimeters, something like that, where it's a unit of measure. That's ideal. I would be less tempted to use it for a large set of data or dynamic data. In other words, data that can change frequently. For that, we might want to look at a JSON feed. And for that, we need to take a look at jQuery autocomplete. And we will indeed take a look at a few examples of that in our next set of videos. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.